turn me around. Praise my feet, go and celebrate. I thank the master, I thank the savior, because he healed my heart, changed my name. Welcome to our service this morning. We so appreciate your presence there online. Thank you very, very much. Thank you also those of you who are in Corpus Christi and the Coastal Bend. We invite you out to our services. If you should, should uh, like, you could come out now or at 1030 or 1230. Uh, we would appreciate your presence. For those uh, brothers and sisters around the world, those of you who are in Africa, Asia, Europe, here in North America, Central America, South America, Australia, and the islands of the sea. Those of you who are always writing to us and letting us know that you are watching the broadcast, we appreciate that so very, very much. We want you to enjoy this service, not just to be here, but to enjoy it. And uh, when we uh, stand or we raise our hands, you're welcome to do the same. I would like to read a scripture. Scripture is always appropriate. In the scripture, the psalmist says in Psalm 40, I waited patiently for the Lord, and he inclined to me and heard my cry. He also brought me up out of a horrible pit, out of the miry clay, and set my feet upon a rock and established my steps. He has put a new song in my mouth, praise to our God. Many will see it and fear and will trust in the Lord. Blessed is that man who makes the Lord his trust and does not respect the proud, nor such as turn aside to lies. Many, O Lord, our God, are your wonderful works which you have done. Your thoughts which are toward us cannot be recounted to you in order. What a wonderful psalm. What a wonderful blessing and promise that God has made to all of us. So why don't we all stand, those of us who are in the sanctuary. Thank you so much for being here. We bless you all for coming out early. Now, Brother James is going to be leading us in praise and worship. <clears throat> let us respond. Amen, amen. Come on, let, let praise be a weapon that silences the enemy. Can we lift up a praise to our Lord this morning across the room? Let's give him some praise across the room. Hallelujah. Are you ready to give him some praise? Let praise be a weapon that silences the enemy. Come on now. Let praise be a weapon that conquers all anxiety. But let it rise. Let praise arise. We sing. We sing your name in the dark and it changes everything. We sing with all we are when we claim your victory. Let it storm inside of me and let it rise let faith arise come on now we'll see you break down every wall we'll watch the giants fall you cannot survive when we praise you let God a breakthroughs on our side forever live to life with all creation Christ. freedom feels like this is what heaven sounds like we praise you 
we praise you. This is what living looks like. This is what freedom feels like. This is what heaven sounds like. We praise you. We praise you. This is what living looks like. This is what freedom feels like. This is what heaven sounds like. We praise you. We praise you. This is what living looks like. This is what freedom feels like. This is what heaven sounds like. We praise you. We praise you. We'll see you break down every wall. We'll watch the giants fall. We cannot survive when we praise you. The God of breakthroughs on our Oh, man. 
One more shout of praise. One more shout. And we give you glory this morning, Lord. We give you glory this morning, Lord. For isn't the name of Jesus wonderful? Isn't the name of Jesus wonderful? All the world, for all the world can come to Him and have their sins removed. Isn't the name of Jesus wonderful? Isn't the name? See, isn't the name of Jesus beautiful? Isn't the name of Jesus beautiful? Son of God, Son of God, one of us, the lover of our souls. Isn't the name of Jesus beautiful, eternal King, the eternal King, you reign forever, and we will see the glory of your name. Your name is all they need. Your name is all we need. Isn't the name of Jesus powerful? Isn't the name of Jesus powerful? Chains are broken when it's spoken.
There's nothing worth more that will ever come close. No thing can compare. You are living hope. Your presence. And I've tasted and seen of the sweetest of loves where my heart becomes free and my shame is undone. In your presence, Lord. Holy Spirit, you are welcome here. Come flood this place and fill the atmosphere. Your glory, God, is what our hearts long for. To be overcome by your presence, Lord. Your presence, Lord. There's nothing worth more. There's nothing worth more that could ever come close. Nothing can compare. Your living hope. Your presence. Your presence, oh, I've tasted and seen, I've tasted and seen of the sweetest of loves, where my heart becomes free, and my shame is undone. Oh 
experience the glory of your goodness. Let us become more aware of your presence. Let us experience the glory of your goodness. Let us become more Take sickness away from the midst of you. No one shall suffer miscarriage or be barren in your land. I will fulfill the number of your days. And we thank you and we honor you and we praise you and we bless you for this pronouncement upon this assembly. We thank you and we bless you for this pronouncement upon those who are watching online by internet. We thank you and we praise you. We give the glory and honor to you, God, because you are the, the only one deserving. We pray for these requests. We pray for Michael. And we ask that you would remove the chest pains and that he would have no more chest pains. It is as though when you saw Pharaoh following Israel, your people. And the pronouncement came from the Moses saying, the Egyptians that you are seeing today, you will see no more forever. Hallelujah. We pray this upon him in the name of the Lord. We pray for Joey. We ask you, Lord, to, to just be that chief surgeon as the, the doctor removed cataracts from his eyes. Be that chief surgeon. You are the physician. For you said those who are well don't need a physician. But you had not come to call the righteous but sinners to repentance. Likewise, do the surgery for joy. Maria is in need of you that you would heal her and walk her through this situation with cancer. Heal her body, every organ, cause her to be strong in spirit in the name of Jesus. We thank you for our sister Lyris and we thank you that, that you have brought her thus far. We thank you for her healing total healing. We thank you for these women who have surrounded her in an amazing way. We thank you, Lord God, driving to New Braunfels to be with her, to sit with her. I thank you for Grace, and I thank you for Gracie. I thank you for Miss J. I thank you for those who, uh, Karen and others, who rallied to her side. Thank you. Thank you also for Brother Henry. We ask that you would heal him, for you heal all of our diseases. He constantly reminds us of that. Thank you for healing him as well, as he has prayed for so many. We thank you, Jesus, for our brother, Luis, 
thank you for the strength that is in his body. And I pray that every vestige of the intruder would leave. In Jesus' name, heal strongly, totally, completely. Make him whole. Do the same for Vasanti. Do it for Janelle. Do it for Ricky. Do it for Roy and Ron. And do it for Roy Shearer's dad. In the name of Jesus. Comfort the Sanchez family. In Jesus' name, we give you glory, honor, and praise for these. We bless you, and we know that you, you have proclaimed yourself as the Lord who heals us. So we thank you, Jehovah Rapha. Jehovah Rapha is your name. We thank you for healing us. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Let's give the Lord another hand. Amen. Amen. We're going to have our reading, and then we'll come back in just a moment. Sister Jadira Ulick. Incomparable pardon. But you are God, ready to pardon gracious and merciful, slow to anger, abundant in kindness. The character and nature of the Lord is described in the following passage found in Nehemiah 9, 17. But you are God, ready to pardon, gracious and merciful, slow to anger, abundant in kindness. These are qualities seen only in the Lord, our God. Therefore, we give and receive forgiveness based upon his presence alone. David, king of Israel, found this grace, the grace to forgive. How did he find it? Why doesn't everyone find it? This grace is known only by those who spend time with the Lord. Revelation of his grace is known only through intimacy with him. Let us examine a few lines from Psalm 51 that are clear examples of one who knows God and thereby receives abundant pardon. Psalm 51 verses 1 through 4 say, Have mercy Upon me, O oh God, according to your loving kindness, according to the multitude of your tender mercies, blot out my transgressions. Wash me thoroughly from my iniquity and cleanse me from my sin. For I acknowledge my transgressions and my sin is always before me. Against you, you only have I sinned and done this evil in your sight. David's plea for mercy is not predicated upon his merit, but God's mercy and loving kindness. Forgiveness is never earned, nor is it deserved. However, it is extended to all who have transgressed the laws of God. Not all who transgress walk before the Lord without guilt and shame, but only those who receive God's offer of his only begotten son, Jesus Christ. David realized that his sin was against the one and only holy God. You must recognize this also. Receive today all the benefits of forgiveness. Jesus died for your sins. Therefore, you can lead a life without guilt and debilitating regret. The Lord's matchless grace is for you. In Christ, Pastor Don.
Amen. Come on, let's give the Lord one more hand. Wow, this is so good. Bless you. Bless you so much. Thank you, Brother James. Thank you, those of you who have participated. Thank you, team. Thank you, uh, Sister Dalida, and all of you for being here. I wanted to come here quickly and just say a couple of things. Um, uh, one is that Ashley Kendall is trying to just mosey out of here and is going to be moving to San Antonio. And Ashley came in uh, uh, some time ago. Actually, I don't remember exactly how long. Help me. Year and a half, two years? Two years. Two years ago. And it was just, it's been an immense blessing. Yeah. Just came in, made a presence known. And now she's going uh, to another assignment from the Lord. I recognize it as an assignment from the Lord, Ashley. And uh, before you go, we want to lay hands on you and bless you sometime at the end of the service. And you'll be leaving after this service. One more time? After yes, service. after this service. Okay. And I noticed you, you'll see the SCS, Stark College and Seminary, little uh, booth back there. That's not a Superman booth. Go in and come out, and they're a scholar, or go in and come out, they're a PhD or something. But uh, that, uh, we're going to talk about that a little bit later. Uh, we want to just really uh, promote that uh, Stark College and Seminary. Um, back there, the last time they were here, we started to pray for people, and we didn't get through praying for people. And they, ha they left without doing their job back there, so they're back again today. We'll talk more about it. And then I can't let this moment go by without saying something about my grandson. I thought he was uh, over in college, and somebody said, Nathan said, look, look, at the, what, what am I looking at? There's, your, there's Austin. I said, wow. Well, Austin, welcome back to church. Yeah. Everybody bless you. Amen. Pastor Jackson. Amen. I know. I mean, you've only been gone for a few days, and already you probably can't recognize you. That's crazy. <laughs> All right. Well, uh, real quick, want to wish somebody happy birthday. We have a note here that uh, somebody would like to wish their husband, Ron, a happy birthday this coming Wednesday. So I'll have as a first name, Ron. Is it, yeah, I, th I thought it might be you. Yes, happy birthday. <laughs> happy birthday, brother Ron. And just a note to everybody, if you're going to wish somebody happy birthday, first and last name, so we know who we're talking about, because it could have been Ron, 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 I don't know, right? But to you, there's only one Ron, so I understand that. Absolutely. All right. Well, thank you all so much for being here. Is there anybody with us that is with us for the very first time, your first time guest with us? If you could just wave your hand in the air. Good morning. Good to see you. Good morning. I see you back there. Amen. Anybody over here on this side? Up front. Yes. Good to see you as well. Thank you so much for being here. Right now, our ushers are bringing you an information card. If you could please fill that out. It's just got basic information on there, your name, uh, all that kind of stuff. And we've got some people that would love to reach out to you and see if there's anything that we can do for you, anything we can pray for you about as well. And uh, we're going to be bringing you a gift as well, just a token of us saying thank you for being here with us. And so it is so good to have you worship with us this morning. And it is so good to have all of you here with us this morning. Thank you so much for being here. You all look great. Let's go ahead and take a second to say hi to each other. Go ahead and stand up, turn and look at somebody, wave at them, say hello. They can hear you. Even though you got a mask on, they can hear you. Hello. All right. All right. Thank you so much. Hey, James, how you doing, buddy? You look good, man. Oh, ooh, ooh, well, that was an unsolicited compliment. I like that. All right. Well, we've got some uh, information we want you to be made aware of today. Uh, we've got a lot of things going on here at the fellowship. Uh, this month, we're going to be having our regular monthly men's meeting. Uh, it's this Saturday, July 17th at 9 a.m., uh, it'll be here at the fellowship uh, in the sanctuary. We'll have breakfast provided um, at 8.30 a.m. So if you would like to come have some breakfast with us, uh, please be here at 8.30. If you'd like to come to the meeting itself, 9 o'clock is when we'll be getting started. It's a great time, men. This is a great, great, great time. Okay, so if you have not come, I strongly encourage you to come to these meetings. Uh, it is a wonderful time of edification, of building up and just getting together, forming relationships. It's a wonderful time. 
Also want to let you know that uh, July 24th, that's a Saturday, you can mark your calendars for a suicide prevention training, uh, number two, part two. We're going to be doing this again. Uh, we did it once already, and it was a wonderful time of information and sharing and just learning, right? And so we've scheduled another one that is, again, July 24th at 9 a.m. here at the sanctuary. And so please uh, make sure that you put that on your calendars to not miss out on that. Uh, we also will be having our food pantry uh, Saturday, July 24th from 12 to 1.30 p.m. And uh, we'll be serving the 78412, 78413, and 78414 zip codes and also all of our uh, fellowship family, okay? Uh, you can also buy some t-shirts if, you if you're one of those types of people like myself that like to rep things on, t on t-shirts. You can go to shopthefellowship.com. And you can order some t-shirts for yourself. They'll be available until July 23rd. So that's coming up. All right. So if you want a t-shirt, get online and do that. Um, another announcement that we have is that in August 3rd through August 5th, we're going to be having our Vacation Bible School. Yes! Excited. And so you can get registered for that uh, by visiting the registration table in the main foyer. So it'll be the, the main foyer behind you. Uh, you can get registered that way, or if you uh, would like to call the church office, you can give us a call and we'll get you registered there. Um, on Tuesday, we'll be having a high school writing camp. Uh, Miss Jadita has done the elementary, the middle school, and now we're having our high school writing camp. So if you would like your high school student <clears throat> to attend a writing camp this Tuesday, you can get with Miss Jadita after this service, and she'll get you signed up for that. The first two were excellent, and this one's going to be just as excellent as well. Uh, so we thank you so much for making note of all those things. Also, our media ministry is uh, compiling a uh, photograph and video narrative of our church history. So if you have any videos or any things that you would like to send, please email them to videoministry at yahoo.com. And if you would like to be water baptized, please just call our church office and we'll get you scheduled for that. Okay? Well, those are all the announcements that we have this morning. We're now going to jump into our time of giving, our offering time. So our ushers will get in position. And if you need an offering envelope to make record of your giving, you can just raise your hand and our ushers will be quick to give you one. If you're giving by check, you don't necessarily need an envelope because your information's on the check. But if you're giving by cash and would like record, you can just raise your hand, get an envelope, and our ushers will give you one. Please make sure that you write legibly so that we can give you record of your gift. And if you would, you, if you'd like to give online, you can go to cccfellowship.com forward slash give and click the giving option there. Uh, or you can also text your gift to 361-386-2565. Text the word keywords and it'll give you all the different giving options back to your phone, okay? Well, thank you all so much for getting that gift ready. I'm going to pray uh, over the offering, and then, um, Pastor, would you like to introduce the first speaker that we have today? I, I don't have anything special. I mean, this is a very special person that is going to be getting... You know what? I will. I will go ahead and, and have a little something special for this person. So I will pray for the offering, and then the next person that you hear will be the most wonderful handsome, amazing praise and worship leader that we've ever had here at CCCF, Mr. James Roots. You know, it's kind of weird. You, you actually were on my mind this morning when I woke up. Um, I woke up about 14 minutes before my alarm, and the Holy Spirit said, uh, get up, like come spend time with me. And I was so tired, and I was like, Oh, but Lord, I'm so tired. And within my spirit, I heard, ain't no alarm going to cry out in my place. And I was like, what? And that's a throwback to a song, ain't no rock going to cry out in my place. Going to lift my hands and glorify his glorious name. And it made me start thinking about our praise and worship leader at the time. And then all of the history leading up to it. And then I started thinking about our praise and worship leader this morning, James Roots. And I remember he's preaching this morning. And I started praying for him. And he's going to bring a wonderful message for all of you. So make sure that you are in position, as Miss Marvis says. Get in your learning position, get your thinking cap on, and get ready for a message from the Lord. Okay, let me pray for you, and then you'll be in the hands of the ushers. Father, we thank you so much for this wonderful morning, this wonderful time. Lord, you are so good. You are so awesome. Jesus, we love you so much. Thank you for your life. Thank you for your service. Thank you for all that you have given us, the gifts that you've given us, the forgiveness that you've given us, the grace, the mercy that you have taught us how to live like you. 
Father, I ask that you bless the gift that is being received this morning. I ask that you bless the giver, that you pour out on them a hundredfold, whatever it is that they've given today. We love you, Lord. We thank you for your glorious life. And in your name I pray, Jesus. Amen. Come on, come on. Somebody give God some praise this morning for that. Amen. Can we give him a big shout of praise right now? Hallelujah. Thank you so much, Amy. Amy, Amy's been such an amazing part of our praise team. It's been amazing to see her grow. It's been amazing to see her uh, grow in her talents and her gifts and playing the keyboard. And and, uh, when she showed up, she was really shy. And now she's just rocking solos back there. She's doing it up, man. Amen. Praise God, Pastor. Thank you so much for this opportunity. I'm nervous, but it's okay. Are you nervous? Always. I know, right? (laughs) Amen. All right. Hallelujah. Here's what we're going to do. Wow, everything's wet up here. Nice. Hallelujah. (laughs) How many of y'all are ready to dig in the Word today? Amen. Hallelujah. Now, it doesn't matter if you've been here uh, about a month or a couple of days or 13 years, as in my case, my my family. We've been here 13 years, been here uh, praising the Lord in this ministry. But the one thing that we know in this ministry and the one thing that we've learned is that there's one thing that we teach, and that's Jesus Christ. We teach who he is. We teach and what he's done on the cross. We teach Jesus if you've been here long enough, you'll notice that when you read the Bible, you start to get into this pattern of now seeing Jesus everywhere from the beginning to the end. You see Jesus in every scripture that we read. You see Jesus in every outcome of every story that happens in the Bible. We see Jesus all the way through. There is nothing apart from the Bible away from Jesus. Jesus is the centrality of the Bible. And with Christ being the centrality of the Bible, we know that he is from the beginning of the end. So that's okay. So when we go into the Old Testament, we're still going to preach Jesus Christ. Amen? So that's what we're going to do today. We're going to go into the Old Testament. So I need you guys to turn into your Bibles to the book of Psalms 119. Now, Psalms 119 is the biggest Psalms out there. It's, It's got 150 verses to it. But what I want you to do is take the middle of your Bible, kind of open it up, and you should land right near it. So... We're going to start. It's right there, I'm telling you. And we're going to start with 97. 119 verses 97, and we're going to go down to 105. Whenever you get there, somebody say amen. Now, to understand the Scriptures, 
you have to know Christ. There's no other way. To understand the scriptures, you have to know Jesus Christ. To understand the scriptures completely and totally, you have to know Jesus Christ as your Savior. There's a big difference. Because a lot of people can teach the Bible as the Bible, as a history book. But the Bible doesn't come alive until Jesus Christ is living in your heart. It doesn't work that way. It doesn't work any other way. I can teach the Bible all day long, but unless, unless it penetrates your heart, the only way that happens is through Jesus. He has to do that. You didn't do that. You couldn't do that. You didn't even do that in the beginning. Whenever you got saved, it wasn't because of you. It was because of him. So when we look at the scriptures, we're going to look at it in the viewpoint, the correct viewpoint of Jesus Christ. Now, turn to 97. Are you all ready? 11997. And we're going to understand the Lord. We're going to understand Jesus in the Psalms. Because let me tell you something. If Jesus was small enough to understand, he wouldn't be big enough to worship. I want you to think about that for a minute. If Christ was small enough to understand, he wouldn't be big enough to worship. And the Holy Spirit's going to help us. So let's read. 97. Oh, how I love your law. Now, the writer of Psalms is starting out. He is delighting in the Lord. He's got a delight in his law. He's got a delight in his commandments. And when you read Psalms 119, you're going to see a recurring, a recurring theme in it. It's about delight. And that states that he delights in his laws, his commands, his precepts, anything about the Lord. He delights in the Lord. And he says, oh, how I love your law. It is my meditation all the day. Now watch this. Let's put it the way we're supposed to put it. He doesn't know Jesus yet. The writer of this psalm, we don't know who this, the writer of this psalm is. We just know he's a contributor. Some, some give it to David. Some give it to uh, Abraham and Moses. But we really don't know. But he knows the Lord. Now, I want you to take this. Watch this. It says, oh, how I love your law. We know that Jesus Christ is the fulfillment of Come on, interact with me. The fulfillment of the law. So let's reread that. Oh, how I love Jesus. See how it changes? Oh, how I love Jesus. You, through your commandments, or Jesus, through your commandments, make me wiser than my enemies. For they are ever with me. I have more understanding than all my teachers. For your testimonies, for Jesus Christ, is my meditation. I understand more than the ancients. And by meaning by ancients, what he's talking about are people that are 60 years and older. <laughs> I'm kidding. I love you. I understand more than the ancients because I keep your precepts, because I keep who? Jesus. I have restrained my feet from every evil way that I may keep, says your word, but Jesus was, is who? The Word. Isn't that amazing? I have not departed from your judgments for you yourself, for Jesus have taught me. Now, see, here's where we're going to get into the crux of my message. How sweet is Jesus to my taste? Sweeter than honey to my mouth. Through your precepts, through Jesus Christ, I get understanding. Therefore, I hate every false way. Your word, Jesus, is a lamp to my feet and a light unto my path. Let us pray. Father God, Lord, I thank you for this time. I thank you for what you're going to do today in this word. I ask God that you would move in our hearts. I ask God that you would help us to delight in you more than anything else in this world. God, I thank you for what you're going to do. Use these, these, this message, Father, to touch hearts in Jesus' name we pray. And everybody said, Hallelujah. So one of the things that we do here at the church, too, is that whenever somebody gets saved, we always turn them to the book of John. The reason why we do that is because we want people to get to know Jesus right away. We want people to get to understand Jesus right away. Pastor always says, when you start preaching, get to Jesus as fast as you can. So what we do is we say, here's your Bible, here's John, get to reading. We want you to get to Jesus as fast as we can. And we see that in the Old Testament. So in this passage, there's three things I want us to get out of this. And I, 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 um, I titled this message, Jesus, Our Greatest Delight. 
But the three things I want us to see is the delight in our hearts, understanding or discernment in the choices that we make, and the direct paths we choose as we walk out with Jesus. For the steps of the righteous man are what? They're ordered by God. So point one is delight shows value in Christ. Now let's go back to 103. You ready? Watch this. 103. This is going to blow your mind because I thought this was amazing when I found it out. It says, how sweet are your words to my taste? Sweeter than honey to my mouth. Now, let me ask you guys a question. How many out here like honey? Honey is an amazing thing, isn't it? My brother has a brother-in-law who has a honey farm. I am so blessed. Because every time I go see my brother, I load up on some of that honey. I bring it home because I love honey and I love cornbread. (laughs) <laughs> your mouth's watering in it so the other day we had a little fellowship at our place and, and 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 a friend of ours brought over some cornbread oh some of the greatest cornbread i ever had let me tell you what and we took some of that nice salted butter melted it on there and took some of that honey oh man sweet to a taste in my mouth but let me tell you something honey back then was such an amazing, was such a, a huge value to their culture. Honey was, an, um, was, was so big that they used it as currency. Think about this for a minute. It was so valuable, it was like they could walk up to a Mercedes-Benz dealer and say, yeah, I'll give you four jars of honey for that. And the dealer's like, oh, come on, I'll take it. Four jars of honey, you bet. Honey was traded. Honey was was used as medicinal purposes, too. Honey was used in medicine. Y'all remember that song, Help Me Finish It? A spoonful of sugar. A spoonful of sugar. Okay, we'll, we'll skip that one. But it's very true. Honey was used in so many different things. You also know honey was used as a varnish and also cement. Yeah, but did you also know that honey has, an in, has a uh, shelf life forever? Never goes bad. And the writer of Psalms right here, he says, sweeter than honey to my mouth. He's saying, look, here is an amazing, valuable product. Here's an amazing thing that we know. This is one of the most valuable things that we have that we know of today. Because see, t- today in our time, honey, you can find it anywhere. You can go down to do a barbecue place and find them in the little packets and load up your purse and walk out with them and nobody says anything. Don't do that. But I'm saying is that nobody will say anything because honey, it's around everywhere. But back then it wasn't. So it was such an amazing valued commodity. And he's stating that your word is sweeter than that. What he's doing is he's giving more value to the word of God than he is to one of the most precious commodities they had at that time. He's trying to get the reader to understand that the Word is more valuable than anything. How many of y'all believe that today? The Word is more valuable. Let me write this down. This is a quote, and I want you to write this down. Christ is not valued at all unless Christ is valued above all. Did you grab that? Christ is not valued at all unless Christ is valued above all. When we place the correct value, Jesus, Jesus to the Scriptures, it becomes a desire of our hearts. How many of y'all all of a sudden had that desire for sweet honey when I started talking to you about that, right? Y'all all of a sudden were like, oh, let's get out of here. I want to go get some honey. I want to get some cornbread, Right? But see, that's what the Word of God does in our hearts. It gives us that desire for more of Him. Our craving for the worldly things start to change for the kingdom things. It's what what happens when we start putting the Word in our heart. It starts changing the things that are going on inside our hearts. Okay? We come with desires in our hearts. We do. But when we start mixing God and saying, Lord, you take over, then all of a sudden God starts saying, all right, I'm going to take that and I'm going to tweak it and I'm going to make it mine. And I'm going to change that. And you're not even going to realize, but I'm going to change that. There's an old saying that they used to say, the ancients used to say. (laughs) I used to do the things, 
that I don't do anymore because of Christ. I don't go there anymore, right? I don't say the things I used to say anymore because of Jesus Christ. What happened? It changed. The light started coming into their hearts. It's kind of like the taste buds when, you, when they introduced honey. Can you imagine that first time they introduced honey to the civilization back then? It's kind of like when you introduce sugar to a baby, mm-hmm. to a toddler. It becomes like crack cocaine to that toddler. How many of y'all have ever had a toddler? You put sugar in their mouth, and that's all they want, you know, donuts, candy. You fight with them at the store. They're always going after the candy aisle. There's a reason why they put the candy right there in reach of children. <laughs> but see, here's the thing. Jesus wants to be more than that. How many of y'all are struggling with an addiction here this morning? You want to know how to get over an addiction real quick? Jesus has to be more than the addiction. You have to delight more in Jesus Christ than that addiction. Because the thing is, is that an addiction is something that you're going to give value to. An addiction is something you're going to put money on. An addiction is something you're going to sacrifice for. Ask anybody who's addicted to heroin. Ask anybody who's addicted to cocaine. They'll do anything for the next fix. But when Jesus Christ becomes more than that addiction, his value becomes more than that, that's how you get over it. You introduce Jesus into their hearts, into their lives. And if we delight ourselves in the Lord, he will give us the desire of our hearts. The Scripture says that, does it not? Psalms 37, 4. But wait a second. Jeremiah 17, 9 says, The heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Who can know it? Who can understand it? So why in the world would God give us the desires of our hearts if our heart is wicked above all things? Because when Christ gets a hold of our hearts, our desires become His. His desires become ours. And it changes as we move along. And we start to want Him more. It's kind of like that, that, that craving for that honey. Our taste buds change. Our heart delights change because we delight in Christ. We want more of Him. But here's the beautiful thing about the Lord. You ready? Here's the beautiful thing about the Lord. The Lord gives you the want to want Him more. It's not something that you do. It's what He does. The Lord gives you the want to want Him more. And when you start delighting and wanting Him more above all things, the things of this world fade away. The things of this world grow dim. Amen? Come on, give God some praise. Point number two, the delight affects the understanding. So let's go back to 119.104. When you're there, somebody say amen. It says, through your precepts, and that word precepts is a key word. I want you to keep a hold of that. It says, through your precepts, I get understanding. Therefore, I hate every false way. The definition of precepts is a guiding principle or a rule. Pastor always says, says here that there are principles, but we teach and preach who? The principle. Now, I want you to take and I want you to put Jesus back in where it says principles. I want you to say, through Jesus, I get understanding. Through Jesus, I get understanding. And if you want to get understanding through God's precepts, you have to understand Jesus. And when we understand Jesus, we understand his ways. Because the relationship between you and God is not based upon the relationship you would have as if you know everything about God. Because you don't. And we'll never stop learning about the Lord. We'll never stop learning. Even on our deathbed, we're going to learn the Lord. We are going to learn Jesus on our deathbed. And it's not like a relationship. Okay, so I've been married to my wife for 25 years almost now, coming up in October, right, babe? 25 years. Woo! 25 years. We are doing good. And 
in the last 25 years, I've gotten to know her so well that I can finish her sentences. I sit like her now. I've noticed that we sit on the couch together, and I like I sit just like my wife. It's weird. And I looked. I'm like, what am I doing? And I sit just. I mean, and, and we walk together the same. We talk the same. We 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 are one as a married couple, because I understand her and she understands me. I have this deep understanding with my wife. And see, that's the thing that God is trying to get us to do is he wants us to have a deep understanding of him, but it's basically us understanding him because see, he understands us already. There is nothing apart. There's nothing in us that he does not understand. He has it. And as we grow and develop the relationship that we start, we understand the directions that he wants us to go. Whenever when my wife and I, whenever, whenever we go somewhere, she has faith that I'm going to take us where we need to go. She understands I'm going to take us there. Um, and I do the same when she drives. I have faith that she's going to take us where we need to go. I don't worry about that. My wife knows where we're going. I know where we're going. But see, God knows exactly where you need to be. And he's going to give you that direction that you need. The more you delight in him, the more understanding you receive, the more you know where he's taken you. The strength of the relationship is based not on his understanding of us, but our understanding of who he is. And the delight that we have in him brings more understanding and lights our direction. Psalms 119, 105. Let's go there real quick. It says, your word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. The word, word. Jesus is the word. Jesus is the lamp to my feet and the light to my path. And our world is moving so fast nowadays away from God. We are starting to become, if not already are, a godless nation, a godless people. Not not us church people. I'm talking about just in whole. We're starting to become a godless people. And what's happened is, is that we've taken the foundation that we've taught for so many years, and the world has pulled that out and has gotten rid of it. There is no value, value taught anymore to our young people. They have nothing to stand on. I have this platform to stand on. It's solid. I saw it get built. It's very solid. I have trust in this platform. But our children do not anymore. One of the biggest sayings that's going on right now is, is, that, is that, oh, well, let the child just grow up and do whatever and, and discover his own values. And they're throwing these children out to the wolves. I mean, think about this. Think about this for a minute. We're saying that it's okay for an eight-year-old now to make a decision of changing whether he wants to be a boy or a girl. Think about that for a second. We've stopped teaching value to our children. We stop teaching Jesus Christ to our children. They have no foundation anymore to stand on. And the world says this is good. This is not good. J.C. Riles in his book Holiness, he puts it best when he said, there is a common worldly kind of Christianity. Let me, let me, let me, let me pre- preface this real quick before I say it. Even in the church, we have started moving that direction. Even in the church. Because we don't want to offend anybody. Because we don't want to say to somebody, oh, well, hold on, that's sin, you can't do that. We, want to, we, do, we don't want to do that because we don't want to hurt anybody's feelings. That's a problem. J.C. Ryle says this, there is a common worldly kind of Christianity in this day which many have and think they have enough. A cheap Christianity which offends nobody and requires no sacrifice which costs nothing and is worth nothing. Our young people are thrown into the world with no foundation and are expected to create their own values. And we're supposed to leave them alone, according to the society. Let me tell you something. When I was a youth pastor about uh, 15 years ago, at that time, when youth left high school and went into college, statistically, 82% of youth would walk away from Christ, would walk away from from any kind of religion. 82% when they got to college. Now I'm going to share an even more staggering thing with you. 
today, millennials and Gen Zers, before they get to college, 56% of them today either don't believe in God or just flat out don't care. Now think about that for a minute. They just don't care. They don't care whether you call them a sinner. They don't care whether you, you say what they're doing is wrong. They don't care. They don't care there's a God. They have, they're just like, well, I don't care. You go live your life, I'll live mine. Leave me alone. Right? What's good for you is, and what's good for me. They don't care. And that's, that hurts. Because we shouldn't be that way. There should be a foundation that we should be able to have for them that goes out there that they can stand on. And, they can, and when they hit college, they can go, no, this is what Christ has shown me. This is what I know. This is what I believe. I was talking to, one, I was talking to our drummer, Stephen, uh, uh, the other day when he was telling me what it was like at college at, at, uh, at Texas. And he said, it is so hard because he'll walk up into the, in, into the band hall and people will be like, you know, they live in their lives. And he, they say, well, why don't you uh, agree with us? Why don't you live your life like us? He says, because I'm a Christian and, and I don't. And I don't want to. And they say, well, we don't want to have anything to do with you. We don't have nothing to do with you. What have we taught our young people? And what are we teaching them today? How can we help that? We help by delighting in the Lord, delighting in His Word, and showing them, we love you. We love you. We know you're lost. We understand that. We know that you're there, and, and, and we accept you where you're at. But we love you. We're going to let God do the rest. But we're going to love you. And we haven't done that lately. We haven't done that in a long time. We've gotten to a point in our society now is that if you don't agree with me and I don't agree with you, we can't be friends. Think about that for a minute. I can't be your friend because I don't agree with the way you think. Where did that change? Why did that change? Because we've ripped out the foundation that we've so long stood on. See, for Christians, Psalms 37, 23 through 24 says, The Lord makes firm steps of the, of the ones who delight in Him. Though He may stumble, He will not fall, for the Lord upholds Him with His hand. Our trust is in Jesus. I want to bring the band back up. As they're coming, we're going to close. But I was watching a YouTube channel. And it was a YouTube channel we kind of liked. And it's one of the biggest YouTube channels out there. And it's, it's funny. It's a lot of fun to watch. They do a lot of fun things. But one of the guys from the YouTube channel, I'm not going to name the name of it but they're very influential on our young people. And they used to live out on the, west, on the east side of the United States until they decided to move to the, the west side of the United States. And I'm not condemning either one. I'm just saying this is what they did. And one of the, one of the hosts of the show started talking about his, what they call deconstructionism from Christianity. And this is a big move that's going on right now across the United States. It's called deconstructionism. Deconstructionism is basically saying, all right, let's take your Christianity and let's tear it apart. And let me show you where all the flaws is that, that, that modern philosophers will say. And they'll convince you to reconstruct your life into anything you want. Doesn't matter what it is. You pick. And one of the things that he said is that when he realized that he didn't, want Christianity anymore. He decided to jump from the boat that he was on, and this is how he describes it. I took and I leapt from this boat of Christianity when I was on this water, and I just leaped it. I just leapt out into the ocean, and I drug my family with me. He didn't land on anything firm. He jumped right out into the water, and he was fine with that. And sometimes... Sometimes we, we question things. And sometimes if, you, if, you're, if you're online or you're tuning in and you're finding a church that you're at is not teaching the Word of God and you need to jump from that boat, you got to remember this, that even if we have to jump from that boat, 
If we're in Christ, we don't sink in the water. We walk on the water. See, he didn't. He jumped and just went right in. We don't. We'll jump and we'll land on the firm foundation of Jesus Christ. But I encourage you, if you're not in a church where they're, where they're not teaching the Bible and they're not teaching Jesus Christ as a centrality of the Bible, you need to look somewhere else. I'm going to say it. You need to be fed Jesus. If you're here this morning, if you're here this morning and you're in that position of, man, I know I need to jump from this life I'm living. I know I need to jump from this. I need something sweeter than honey. Then this morning, Jesus Christ is calling you and he's saying, I am sweeter than that. There's a song that I like called Black Honey by a band that, that I grew up with. I want to read these lyrics to you. And he says, I keep swinging my hand through a swarm of bees because I want honey on my table. I keep swinging my hands through a swarm of bees because I can't understand why they're stinging me. But I'll do what I want and I'll do what I please. I'll do it again till I get what I need. And they're following me across the sea and now they're stinging my friends and my family do what, and I don't know why this is happening, but I'll do what I want, and I'll do what I please, and I'll do it again till I get what I need. I keep swinging my hand through a swarm of bees because I want honey on my table. What are we more satisfied with, the honey or the creator of the honey? How many of y'all been swinging your hands through a swarm of bees, getting stung, and saying, I, I got to have this. I got to have this. I got to have whatever the world's given me. How many of y'all are doing it? It doesn't matter whether you hurt your friends or family. I got to have this. And Christ is sitting there going, but I am the creator of the honey. All you need is me. You don't need anything more. I'll provide the sweetest stuff that you want, but delight in me. And if you're in that position today, and you're saying, I need Jesus more than that, honey. I want you to lift up your hand. Across the room, I want you to lift up your hand. Amen. Amen. Everywhere. We need Jesus more than we need that, honey. We need Jesus more than we need that, honey. And if you've never had the opportunity, if you've never had the opportunity to give your life to Christ, I want to be able to give you that opportunity right now. I want to be able to say, that you have this moment, Jesus is standing there and he's saying, I'm here, I'm here. Let go of the things of this world and let me have your heart. If you're in here this morning and you need Jesus Christ, you need him as your Lord and Savior, I want you to lift your hand up real high. If you're online and you're saying, I need Jesus, I need Jesus in my life, I want you to let our commenters, our our, our people know on YouTube channel, on, on Facebook, on Instagram, wherever we're at, and you let them know, I need Jesus. But if you made that commitment to say today, I need more of Jesus, I want to delight in him. I want you to stand to your feet. I don't want to pray for you. If you need more of Jesus and you want more of him, I want to pray for you. Father God, this morning, Lord, we thank you, Father, for your grace and mercy. We thank you, Lord, for giving us more delight in our hearts, Father God, than we have in anything else to have more delight of Jesus Christ. Father, I pray for everybody that has stood up this morning. Lord, I ask, God, that you will just start putting a want in their heart, start putting a desire in their heart, start putting a, 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 a craving, Lord, for more of you. Father, I pray, God, that, that whenever they leave today, Father, that all they're going to want to do is talk about Jesus, love on Jesus, read about Jesus. Father, I pray, Lord, that you will move in their lives, God, today. Father, God, that, that whatever is in their hearts that is blocking them from it, Lord, I pray that you'll move it out of their way. I pray they'll turn it over to you today, Father, God. I pray that they will give everything to you, Lord. 
And if there's something in your heart right now that needs to go to the Lord, I ask that you would just lay it down right now. Just say, God, I need more than this. I need Jesus. As we sing, I want you to just pray that. There's nothing worth more than will ever come close. No thing can compare. You are living. That's right. There's nothing worth more than Jesus Christ. Your presence. Come on, I've tasted and seen. Let's sing that together. I've tasted. I've tasted and seen of the sweetest of loves where my heart becomes free and my shame is under. That's right, your presence. In your presence, Lord. Holy Spirit, have your way. Come on. Holy Spirit, you are welcome here. Come flood this place and fill the atmosphere. Your glory, God, is what our hearts long for. To be overcome by your presence. that are here. I thank you for changing us inside and out, moving us inside and out every day, Father God, taking us closer and closer and deeper and deeper in love, with more, more in love with you than ever before. God, we bless you. God, we praise you in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Let's give the Lord a big hand. Thank you so much, Brother James. Thank you so much. You know, the, as Brother James was sharing the Word of God, you may be seated for a moment. I was thinking about the old song when I was a boy. It was like a, a little refrain. It was, Lord, have mercy. Do you ever hear that? Uh, only just a couple of us. Lord, have mercy. And I think that's where we are. And uh, it's not enough just to talk about it. We need to do something about it. And what, what we need to do is just to be the church. That's all we need to do. It, it doesn't take self-effort. It takes, as he said so well, it takes drawing into Christ. Just draw near. And the Lord will be the strength of your life. I mean, that's what the scriptures say. The scriptures say that. And so that's what we want to do. We want to go out and walk this out, all right? That's what we want to do. Let's just don't be hearers only, but doers. Doers. Thank you again, Brother James. We so appreciate the word of God. And I, I want to do something I, I said I would like to do, and I want to ask them, do you mind coming up a moment? Pastor Jackson took the, his, his mic with him. Oh, there's another one. Come on. I'm so glad, glad that you're here. Well, I'll come down. I'll come down. Uh, uh, maybe many of you don't know Ashley, but Ashley, she, she just comes in and she makes a difference. And I, I just didn't want her to just go. And, and I do believe the Lord is leading her there. I believe that. I believe that this is a new, a new assignment for her. I'm just glad that she came by here. You may not have known her, but she's been quietly 
affecting change, doing great things, wonderful things, being a great presence, and we want, we're going to miss you. And I had an opportunity to tell you that was not the will of God, but I didn't tell you. Thank you so much. Would you like me to say a word? Yeah, you just... Okay, I'm sorry. Oh, it's all right. It's all right. It's all right. Yeah, you can. Um, I just want to let you guys know that I love you very much, and um, I'm going to miss you guys. Um, Pastor, you've been a tremendous blessing to me and to my walk with the Lord, and uh, I'm really excited to see what God is going to do in this next chapter. And so I love you all very much. Bless you. God bless you. And you're going to be the executive assistant, right? Yes, sir. Um, to, to the pastor in San Antonio, who you have a, a large, um, what you might say, it's a very, very large church. What's the name of the church again? Resurrection uh, Baptist Church. Yes. And she's going to be the, the executive to the, the executive assistant to the pastor is over all of their expansion. She's going to do a superb job. Let's lay our hands on Ashley and bless her. Amen. Come. And and in a moment, in a moment, I'm going to ask you to go by the uh, Stark College and Seminary uh, booth back there. And uh, I would love for all of us to get some education there. Uh, I know Dr. Salelli and uh, Ashley work for him. Uh, actually, Reverend Rochelle Roots works out there as the as the chief executive assistant. So we're going to bless Ashley, lay our hands on her, and let's just pray for her. Lord Jesus, we thank you so much for Ashley, and we bless her. We lay our hands on her, and we're so grateful for her and her next assignment. It's, it's an assignment. We're glad that you loaned her to us, and we have enjoyed her. And we pray that your hand, and we know your hand, will be upon her as she goes. We thank you for her. We bless her. And we declare over Ashley good things because you've promised no good thing will I will be, as it were, inundated by a good thing. And as our brother taught us before, that she'll be able to breathe under the inundation, the wa under the water, under the flood. We thank you for your hand upon her. We thank you for her doing a superb job where she's going. Bless her in Jesus' name. Thank you so much. Amen. Amen. Boy, you're going to, all of you, if you just knew her, you just, you want to go with her almost, almost. Yeah. Thank you so much, Ashley. Well, it's time for us to go. If you'll uh, lift, uh, stand up. That'll work. Thank you so much. It's been a good morning. And we're going to have another good morning coming up in a minute. All right, lift our hands and repeat after me, please. And bless your brothers and sisters by saying, the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you. The Lord be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you. And the Lord give you his peace. In Jesus' name, I bless you. Go with God. Go with God.